Hi, Lawrence. Yep. Hi, Laurie. We've been here half an hour, and now we've turned it on. Yeah. Uh, we always have to talk a little bit to see what we're going to talk about before we start talking. So yeah, it's, it's been a time. while, and I apologize for that. It's my fault. I've been super busy working and unable to really scramble together the time to hang out and to do any research and so on. And so... Um, I think I want to start off this broadcast with sort of an update of where we are and, and how we got there. And, and that is because um, I was telling you bef before we started recording that after all this time of going through all these maps and models and debunkings and, and everything else, day after day, I still see this circle map, circle model, talk about the ice wall, talk about the dome, more and more explanations for how things work in this circle, you know, pizza pan earth with things going around in circles over our heads and so on. And um, it's kind of something that we used to do uh, when we first got started out, and that is process of elimination and questioning the dogma, the flat earth dogma, Obviously, we would never have met if both of us had not questioned the globe model. And so that's how we got started. We both started investigating Flat Earth independently uh, back in 20, late 2014, early 2015, and looking at all of the information that was out there. And then when we hooked up to start doing these hangouts and broadcasts, we 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 started asking the deeper questions. Something about this doesn't add up, something about that doesn't add up. I don't like what this person is pushing or that dogma is saying. And so we started doing our own debunking of the dogma, not of the flat earth in particular, because the thing that brought us together was the fact that we both saw that the earth presents as flat. It presents as flat. If you believe it presents as a globe, you will find all the evidence you possibly need to fill in the blanks of, oh, yeah, sure, it's a globe. They've always said it's a globe. Sounds right to me. If you started investigating the concave model, you found all kinds of, you know, uh, evidence that if you skewed it to fill in the blanks of concave, you could do that. So that's what flat earth is. That's what concave is. That's what the globe is. They're all belief systems full up to the brim with their own independent dogma that explains how things work. Right. And yeah. so why don't you briefly hit on the high points of why the earth isn't a flat disc dome covered thing and, and, and why you can't just belong to the flat earth community in general anymore. That's all pushing that circle pizza dome covered ice wall surrounded dogma. Yeah. Well, I mean, I was recent, I made some videos recently about other subjects and, uh, you know, to get some more hits on it, I signed up for, I don't know, about 10 flat earth, Facebook pages uh, and started posting them on there and we, which did boost the hits but now I still get, I get lots of notifications there and there's a huge number of new flat earthers coming in because you're getting all the newbies posting asking the same questions that people were asking five years ago but when these newbies come in um, they're getting the same stuff that we got when we came in with the, the circle models and the, the dome and, and the ice wall and all this sort of stuff and they're taking it as read that, you know, that is the, the correct model. But obviously, you know, we, we went through all the process of, you know, it didn't fit. It, it logically, it didn't fit in terms of, you know, what the sun does, uh, the measurements. We uh, went through it for four years, Lawrence, right? Four years. Yeah. So, you know, it just doesn't work. And it can't be measured. You know, you can't, you, you cannot put cities on a, on a flat piece of paper uh, and you cannot get it to fit what we are told reality is. There are going to be errors, whichever way you do it. The one with the least errors was the the Collingham diamond shaped map, which had, you know, which was within to, overall it was within about five percent of of what we're told reality is. But even so, it's still wrong. 
uh, and you should be able to do it exactly. Um, and obviously the reason I don't think you can do it exactly is because we're not living in what I would call a, a base reality, a physical world. It is a supernatural world and reality happens as you move. The, the reality is created for you. As you, If you get in a plane and you fly over to China and you've never been to China, then it's like this thing where nothing exists until it's been observed. So when I'm going to get to China, it's created by the collective consciousness of all those who've seen China. And this is what China's like. Um, you know, you get these, um, you, not what they call the, these physicists who talk about they can take two particles and have them 10,000 miles apart and you, you influence one and the other one. The, it's instantaneous, like we're talking now, and it's supposedly three and a half thousand, four thousand miles between where I am and you are, but there's no lag. You know, that was the other, you know, the other subject, you know, the internet for me is, is not what we're told it is. It's the, the ethernet, the, this information, there's no wires on my computer. It's, you know, it's wireless uh, allegedly to the router, uh, but then it's got to go down cables and through various channels and servers and, you know, the servers on yours. I mean that, you know, cell towers. Do you, do you remember the old Apollos? Where there, there was a lag, wasn't there? You know, they were talking, talking you know we know it was fake anyway but they put a lag in um between you know one person speaking and the other because it had to go all this distance but now there's no lag and if you start looking up about the ethernet which i did um it's virtually telling you that it's going through the ether i haven't, I haven't got it to to show on um, what's it but we could probably do it for another um another hangout um it's the ether. This information. Well, okay. Okay. I mean, look at the definition of ether. It's a it's a means of transmitting information through this electromagnetic magnetic medium, which is what which it's couldn't happen it. on the flat Earth as a flat thing with a dome over the top of it in a circle, physical. Yeah. Okay, that's yeah. part of the other problem. Is the globe was a you know the globe thinking is a physical sphere flying through space spinning and vortexing and all that stuff okay that's the physical globe then you go from that to the physical flat earth um you got to really stretch your mind to think about you know cuz people are automatically going to ask all these questions well what's it sitting on all oh, foundation well what's underneath of it um, don't know. Well, what's above it? Don't know. Well, what, what's beyond the sides? Don't know. Well, what's it floating on? What's it sitting on? What's containing it? What all of these questions become the opposite questions of the of the spinning globe vortexing through space. Okay, yeah. so it's not fit. The flat Earth can't be physical either. It, it so presents we went from itself. physical, we tried to fit physical description into another physical, well, it could be like this, right? Yeah. Uh, so that's um, back to my saying, it presents as flat. Physical. Try to try to try to make all the mechanicals work on, on this flat, dome covered, enclosed disc, flat floating on the back of a turtle. I mean, I still see that every now and then, the big turtle with the with the flat earth on top of it with a little dome over the top and the sun going around and the moon going around in circles. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous, okay? Let's get smarter than that. And so to, to, to continue on from where you were going, um, what did we do for the last four years? Systematically went through and debunked the circling sun, the ice wall, the dome enclosed thing, the what's below, what's above, what okay, we we the placement of the plate of the 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 north in the center, the, we just went through all of it for years now. Well, I know, and then you, you've got the cr crazy people telling you that uh, to go east-west, uh, you're on the turn all the time. Well, navigation would be completely impossible. 
if you had to keep turning all the time, you know, because you'd have to check your compass every every 50 meters or something. You'd, well, you'd or, or trying to figure out what northeast from southwest from this point of the GPS on the map is for this circle thing. Try to try to figure that out. Direct directions would be meaningless. So, I mean, but they, you know, but the big channels are still telling you that you know this is what plane, planes are always on the turn if they're flying in a straight line. Flying in a straight line is, is and yet they good. made complete fun of planes n having to nose down all the time to keep from on the globe to keep from leaving the atmosphere. Yeah. Okay. They 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 realized that. But they can't realize you'd have to keep banking to the right or to the left if you were going east or west all the time to keep in a straight line. Oh, but it's so big, you wouldn't notice. Well, if you wouldn't notice that, then then you wouldn't notice. You have to keep your nose down to stay within the atmosphere or you're going to take off into space. It's the same premise. It's the same premise. You would notice. Okay. So... Don't make fun of people making fun if you are going to be so easy to be poked holes in, right? And, and so um, this the theory that, you know, saying, well, okay, let's go look up the distance around the equator. Let's go look up the distance around the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. The Tropic of Cancer and Capricorn are roughly the same distance around from one point on it to the next point on it. How does that work on that circle map, that flat circle map? Obviously, Cancer is going to be a shorter distance than Capricorn because it's on the other side of the equator, the outside of the equator on this map. That's not what the statistics say. It you know, you can only fool most of the people most of the time, but you can't fool all the people all the time. And we're, we're those people. You can't fool us all of the time. So yeah. now, once, once we deb debunk the flat earth dogma as written, as accepted, then what did we do? We looked at all sorts of stuff, you know. I mean, we've we even got these, you've even got people now pointing out that Captain Cook sailed directly along the freaking ice wall for 60,000 miles. I know, I know. Never, never even looked at the actual route he took. No, and you, and you don't, they don't even look at the fact that he took three different routes in three to three different areas, you, you know, taking three different routes. He never, he, he might have looked at a long distance of, of the Ross ice shelf, which is, what 500 miles long um and said he never found a point of entry he never said he didn't ever find a point of entry into antarctica from coming in from some other direction do you know what i'm saying but i mean yeah. he sailed up to the the arctic he's he i mean he jumped around all the islands in the south pacific <clears throat> it's just ridiculous but when you point that out then you automatically be called, you get you get called a glober or a shill, either one. How many times did we get called shill? Thousands of times. My block list on Facebook is immense from all the people that blocked me or I had to block because of the shill bullshit. So once once we debunked the the dogmatic flat earth disc dome covered ice wall encircled circling circles we we went on to look well what else could it be what other shape might it be right enter pac-man right yeah. the only way it could work on any flat <clears throat> map other than the circle thing where you came back to where you started was you had to go from east to west and go off the end and come back the other side that's where our thinking with pac-man came in because we had no other way to explain it did we yeah, but that's exactly what happens with time and date. He does a Pac-Man on that. Well, they're just, showing, they're just showing on a flat surface what reality is. We know it's not a globe. And what map but, do they use for the Pac-Man effect on the timeanddate.com? What do they use? They use the Mercator. Okay. Or, the yeah, otherwise known as the Universal Transverse Mercator, UTM map, which is accepted by 
all of these entities that use it as a closest way to put all of the continents on a flat piece of paper that fit. Okay. But unless you take them and wrap them around into a cylinder, what happens? You go off one end, you have to come in the other side of the map. Right. Yeah. I know, but for the book, for the same map, you know, you can present that same map in different ways. You can have the Pacific in the center. You can have it on one side. You can have Russia and America right on one side, or you can have it in the middle. You can, you could have that section, you know, it's like the repeating map, which used to be on all Google maps. If you, you got the zoom in, zoom out, you keep zooming out and you just get the wallpaper effect. They just, right. they have to tell you what it is. And that's all right. now, now, what it is. What is the accepted universal layout of the universal transverse Mercator? It's with Greenwich line. What is that line called? The timeline? Yeah, the, the, the yeah. prime meridian. The prime meridian. <laughs> the prime meridian is usually the center of the UTM, right? Yeah. I mean, you can show it with the um, international date line as the center. And what happens? The center of the map is going to be pretty much kind of like the center of the Pacific Ocean. Who wants to look at that with all the other stuff crowded on the two sides? Right? Yeah. yeah. I know. And then we had Mark Sargent with it. There, there, are, there are only shortcuts on the globe. Well, you know, Mark Sargent knows that, you know, he, he says the globe doesn't exist. Well, it doesn't exist. But if it exists on the globe and it exists in reality, the same shortcuts have to exist on the flat earth. And you can right. get from A to B by flying east or west. And if you're going east or west, then it has to be Pac-Man. It has to be. There's no okay. other way you can do it. So after we got totally made fun of about Pac-Man as a premise for how you can travel from east to west eternally, and come back to where you started, in other words, circumnavigate the map, not the globe, the map, the flat map. That's where people's eyes rolled back in their head because the simplicity of the little pizza pie pancake of everything going in a circle connecting back up, most replicates circumnavigation on a globe. Same premise. Yeah. You start on the line of the circle and you go around and you come back to the same line on, you know, place on the line of the circle. Okay. I know. That, and that's the thing with that, Laurie, is when you get these people doing street interviews and they always get that question and say, well, you know, I flew from uh, Los Angeles to Tokyo, uh, you know, um, or, 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 you know, I could travel in a straight line and about where, please explain that. And they always say, well, yeah, you're going around in a big circle, but you don't notice because it's such a gradual circle. Because it's so big, right. Which, which is rubbish. Which is what they're doing is they're grabbing the same arguments that the, the dogma pseudoscience of the Globers are using. The, 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 what's the mic dropping guy? Um, the grass ties. Tyson. You know, because it's so big or you, you can't get high enough to see it or, you know, the, the classic pseudoscience arguments for when they don't have a good answer for the question, a scientific answer. OK, a, on an observable, repeatable, testable answer. So. All right. So then we get to Pac-Man. And I'm, I'm kind of laughing because somebody sent me a comment yesterday that, you know, so what do you guys think it is now? Because you're running out of options, which is kind of funny if, if you think about it. You know, are we running out of options? Absolutely not. Because until we defeat every, every other thing it could be, it's kind of, you know, Occam's razor. The simple answer is probably going to be the closest to the truth. Um, and, and also the sort of Sherlock Holmesian thinking, well, if it's not that, not that, not that, it must be this. So, Okay, so we get to Pac-Man. We take every conceivable layout of every map that's ever been, you know, drawn up by anybody. The, 
the collignon and the flattened this and the curved that and the heart this and every single one of these. And the only one that came close was the diamond shaped map, or otherwise known as the collignon. Okay. So we get to Pac-Man because that's the only way the collignon can work or any flat square diamond map can work to go from east to west. So then that's when we started to understand that the, the world presents to you as you live it, as you experience it, as you observe it, okay? You have no idea what's going on any place else on earth outside of your visual perspective other than what someone else is reporting from their location to you videos, film, pictures, written reports, whatever, right? That's the only way you know what's happening in Sri Lanka or Moscow or, you know, Australia. And so, and so by, by time and experiencing the earth and your life, and not being able to understand, explain, or model how it works, how, how it works for everyone. See, there's the trick. I know how it works for me. You know how it works for you. But it doesn't work the same for everyone because we're all in different places. We're all in different programs. We're all in different places, you know, experiences of our lives and so on. And so that screams construct. Now, what is a construct? Is a construct physical? Is it simulated in our brains? Is it, are, we little, are we little programs running inside of a computer? Are we in the matrix in the pod and, you know, we're being fed a, a virtual reality movie of our lives? getting to make choices every second of every day. I think I'll have the sweet potatoes instead of the corn. Okay. That's a choice we make every day. And so at the end of the day, every one of us is experiencing a different reality, but there is a general reality for everyone. Earth, our home, the air, the water, the life, the trees, the, the construct, right? How do you define how that's made? How it works, how it repeats. Um, well, you know, how, I, how it, how it's similar to people in similar areas. Like for example, if you live in my city, you're got about the same temperature, the same rainfall, the same sunshine, the same everything, right? Same with you. Well, I mean, everything's been constructed somehow. I mean, if you look, just look around you now, Laurie, look at all the clothes you've got on your body, look, look at all your belongings, everything that you own, everything that you have, everything started off as a thought in your mind. You know, you might have decided to buy a pair of shoes. We're, now, I think we're in a, this is a dense reality that we're in and there are other realities and in the dense reality you know thoughts take time to manifest because it's so dense if you're not in a dense reality thoughts i believe can manifest instantly and i've sat on the beach with a dog i'll walk along the beach and i'll sit on the dunes and you know have a bit of a breather and just think uh, and sometimes I, I'll, I'll look up to the sky and I might see a little yellow dot or a blue, whatever. I'll see a little dot and I can look at that dot and I don't know how to do it. I can move that dot down like a bouncy ball. I can bring it right down to the, to the ocean or, or the surface and then I can bounce it up again and I can just play with this ball of light, whatever it is, with my mind. Uh, and that's like, that is a, like a creative power that we have. You want to well, try it's, it's manifesting. That's what manifesting yeah. is. Yeah, and thoughts thoughts do become reality. I mean, I you know I was in a 
a job situation once where um, I, I was promised a contract that I didn't have, so I moved to a new company and uh, that contract wasn't there. But I believed, I, I, I knew that I could still succeed in other ways and I just started acting slightly crazy and doing things that you wouldn't normally do but they all paid off and it, it built a business for me at the time um and it's your thoughts just your thoughts do manifest the reality that you have and I think everything that you see on this earth is the result of the collective consciousness of every human not other animals well maybe animals as well but every human's conscious collectively it determines what you're going to see when you travel. Um, that's how I see it. And so, and so all of these consciousnesses would have to agree that it's sunny today where we live in order for it to be like that. Because I can't just have my consciousness say, I want it to rain, it's going to rain, and it only rains for me. Everybody oh, yeah. else, it's not raining, okay? And because that's testable that's observable if it only rained at me on you know for me um i could go out and show people somebody would say standing right over there no Lori, it's not raining yo yes it's very definitely raining see the water i would have to have water collecting in my hands to prove to them that it's raining where i'm at it's raining in my reality. Do you see what I'm saying? And yeah. so, it, it, I mean, it's, maybe it's in sectors. I mean, I, 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 th I think we're, people are programmed, um, and they've got different programming for different parts of the realm. All right. Well, look at it like this, and because because I'm a very deep thinker. In other words, when I get started on thinking about something, I can't even tell you how many times people have walked away from me at parties to go get another drink or whatever, because I've just gone off on some abstract, got too deep conversation. And they're they're either not interested or they're too shallow to want to go there or or whatever it is. And they're like, you know, it's been really nice talking to you. Bye. <laughs> you know, yeah. bye. And so. So I'm used to that, but I, I extrapolate, extrapolate my thoughts to, a you know, the nth degree sometimes. Um, and, and so thinking about free will and uh, the construct, okay, it's pretty obvious that in general terms, the construct is being made for us all the time. It's being made, maintained, and, and, um, altered, um, repeated, so on, all the time. Okay, that's what the construct is. That's the supernatural part. We, we can't alter the construct very much, all right? And so even our thoughts, just because I want to be in, you know, some paradise, um, you know, um, pastoral place at the moment. I can't just walk out and manifest my yard to be uh, 27 acres out in the country <laughs> with trees and animals and birds and flowers. Um, I can't yeah. do that. Or, or the other part we, 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 we touched on was that the this this realm, this construct is subjective. Now, I haven't been to, you know, um, the Arctic Circle or Antarctic. But we have proved that the sun is circling in Antarctica. But on the, on the equator and between the tropics, it goes in a straight line. So it's both a straight line. And it's also circling from the observation subjectively from the people that are in the polar regions. Uh, and what I call the polar regions is the top and the bottom of yeah. the construct. But if it was like just a single sun, that couldn't be observed. It couldn't. It well, you know, observed. Lawrence, people are arguing for to the death for the last five years that the sun does not circle Antarctica. Okay. They, well, I know. They, well, they, we, they won't believe you no matter what you say or what evidence well, you show. 
they, they say all the Antarctic research stations are all a hoax and they're not really there and they're somewhere else where they couldn't go there if they wanted if you wanted to because yeah. of the Antarctica Treaty and they would blow you right out of the water and it's in, they're in cahoots and you can't go there and that's part of the whole deception because it's really an ice wall. But, but I, I did that McMurdo one, God knows how many times, and uh, I kept stopping it because he got a time lapse across the top saying right. over 48 hours. And I'd stop it and freeze it and take a screenshot and then you'd get the angle of the sun as it reflects on buildings and cars and people so you know where the sun is and you stop it every hour and you get in a full circle. So from the, if you're in Antarctica, the sun is going all the way around. Right. If you're on a, but there's always you're on. going to be the people who are going to jump in there and say, well, that doesn't fit in my circle pizza pie model, so it must be what? It must be a, a second yeah. sun. Oh, a second sun. Oh, yeah, second sun. Yeah, right. Second okay. sun. I mean, yeah. we've, we've already been through all of this. I mean, you, you. I don't think you could throw a dogmatic you know, pseudo-scientific explanation for why something doesn't fit in that pizza yeah. man model. I don't think there's one we haven't heard of yet, okay? And, and, so, and so, once once you, once you we got to the point, and, you know, we're not alone in this. There's a whole lot of people that follow along with what, you know, we've been through. We have made no... Um, effort at, at at trying to disguise our research path, okay? We've made mistakes, we've laughed, and we've moved on. We, we've agreed with some of the dogma, and then we've debunked it, and then no, now we don't agree with it anymore. You're perfectly, you out there listening, are perfectly within your rights to believe whatever you want, but don't call it truth unless everybody agrees with it and it cannot be debunked because it's been debunked all right so when when somebody fights back with me when i say no the sun doesn't go in a circle ever it never goes in a circle and they say well yeah it goes in a circle uh on on this map blah blah and then you go okay what happens on the equinoxes and they say, well, that's the equal day and night of the, uh, you know, day and night is equal. Okay. What would, how do you explain that every place on earth, the sun passes directly overhead and you have 12 hours of day and 12 hours of night? How do you, how do you define that? <laughs> well, it's not directly on your, overhead, your, but circle, getting, on your you, circle model. How, how can get, you just you get, that one day? Yeah. If yeah, it well, that, that doesn't is happen the way it's supposed to happen on that one day, well, on. on that second day, yeah, cannot ever be. That well, Laurie, me and you, we're both in the northern hemisphere, aren't we? So yeah. your summer is the same summer as mine. Right. You will get your longest day on June the twenty-first, as I will. Yeah, right. because that's when, as we're told, the sun is closest to us. You get your longest day. So, and then as the sun moves further south, your days get shorter, and then it comes back, and the days get longer. Right. However, the sun is not directly over the equator itself, um, apart from at the equinoxes. So, when it's moving away, it's getting further away. So, the day when it moves away, the days should get shorter, and then when it comes back, the days. Um, closer to it, they should get longer. Then when it goes south, they should get longer again. Then when it comes back, they should get so they get shorter. And then when it moves back to us on, for the next equinox, it would get the longer days again. But at the equator, every day to within about sixty seconds a minute is twelve hours seven minutes every day. It just doesn't vary. It's like the sun is directly overhead all the time, but it, it doesn't isn't. matter what time, but, what time of the year it is. It don't fit. You know, it can't it fit. fit. It don't it fit. Can't fit. It can't uh -huh. fit. It can't fit any of the models. So okay, you know, so proposed so far it can't fit the concave. It can't yeah. fit the cell. It can't fit the globe. It can't. It can't fit the the flat circle. Okay. So if it doesn't fit any of those, 
and you have that one factor that doesn't fit, what do you have to do? You have to change your hypothesis, period. You don't have any choice unless you just go, well, it, it works every day, but two days a year. So it's good enough. No, it's not good enough. That's not good enough. It has to be a reason why that happens that way. Now, is that atmospheric? Possibly. Is that uh, the path of the sun over the firmament? Probably most assuredly. That's why it appears to circle both the poles when it's closest to the, each, each one respectively. Um, but think about what you just said. If, if summer in the south and you're in, on, or in Antarctica and the sun appears to make a circle there and go 360 degrees around it, even if it's just barely above the horizon, the shadow knows, the shadow tells you. And then the opposite time of the year, it's doing the same thing in, in the Arctic. But all along, and all of this, while all of that's happening in both of those places, it's still smoking right down through the yep. for the people who live on the equator. Yep. Every day is the same day. It's like Groundhog Day, the movie. It just repeats day after day within a few minutes. Oh, hey, here's a long day. It's 12 hours and seven minutes long. <laughs> so, so. It's, so the sun is the sun and moon are subjective. They've got to be, you know. Well, well, but in my mind, I you know I'm always looking for a mechanical reason for why it appears the way it appears because you know there has to be a reason why the construct is done that way. I mean, is that the subjective uh, purpose by the creator? OK, now and none of this can work for anybody unless you believe it was intelligently designed. Obviously, you you, you have if you believe in a construct at all, you, it has to be intelligently designed, whether it was God is a computer and a machine or whether God is a supernatural being. Either way, it's supernaturally constructed. All right. So. There has to be a reason why make different seasons in different parts of the world in your when you're making up this construct what would be the purpose of that variety i mean just, well i want a little variety on my in my construct you know this half of my sandwich i'm going to put mayonnaise on and this half i'm not um you know i need to make some deserts and i need to make some oceans and i need to make some land and i need to make some of it cold and some of it hot and some of it frozen and why? What would be the purpose of doing that in the construct for, other than for variety? Because the creator of the construct is ultimately a, a super creator, right? Boredom would set in in a matter of seconds and the whole experiment would be abandoned if the same thing just happened day after day after day after day. And the only thing that would be of any interest would be what the stupid humans are doing down there. Because why would you make all these different animals, all of these different systems that, you know, the bee is attracted to this flower and to have the nectar but, oh, one of the benefits, side serendipitous benefits, is that he's collecting pollen on his little legs and he's going over to the next flower and he's pollinating it. That's a system in and of itself, right? Yeah. And the whole construct is full of these amazing systems that all interact with each other pretty perfectly. And... Um, and and they must have a purpose. What well, what is the purpose? I mean, so yeah. Ev I mean, everything, ev everything, everything will rot apart from McDonald's. You know, McDonald's won't rot. But <laughs> you can have you can have the most horrible dog shit on the street, and ultimately it will be a, it will attract some kind of mold that will grow on it and feed on this dog shit. 
or a uh, dung beetle or something. Yeah, yeah, everything, you know. So, and the rain everything. will come and the rain will everything. wash it away after it dries out. And yeah, yeah, everything's recycled. That's the other part of it. Everything is recycled. Yeah. There's nothing new. There's no new, there's no new elements. When was the last time they changed the element chart? Well, they just put these so-called um, super nuclear ones on, don't they? That they just make well, that's up, different. Make up the planets, you know, Pluto. Oh, no, 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 the elements chart. You know, oh, the, the periodic table. The periodic table. When was the last time that was changed? Well, it gets changed all the time, doesn't it? When they discover a new one. Well, well, but is it a base thing? Well, these are these are never elements that you can actually. So, see, touch, or taste. Well, I mean, like I'm saying, is it a base thing? Because to add to the periodic table, it would have to be a base thing. I don't, I don't think there are any elements apart from fire, earth, wind, water, and. Well, heat. I mean, they change and add new clouds all the time. Oh, here's a new cloud. It's a uh, you know. Elements can't. Yeah. Elements don't exist. If you've got a base element, look at the crab. Yeah, you can put take a crab, a saltwater crab, and put it in water totally devoid of calcium and it will still create a new shell there's no calcium in the water where's the calcium come from there isn't any there it's making it well does it it makes it supernaturally right you know i mean so that debunks elements not pulling it out of the you can't well, i mean oh here's, 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 one, here's one i heard today you're a natural medicine person and like the whole idea of the, you know trying to explain to people that vaccines don't work. They're all a hoax. It's just poison. So today I'm reading this post of a friend of mine who is into, you know, a whole lot of, well, it was Nanny Inez, I think is who I saw it from, but it might not have been. Anyway, um, when a baby breastfeeds and they suckle, there's a backwash back into the mother. And the mother's body tests that for, um, for uh, I, I'm paraphrasing, so I'm going to call it diseases or bacteria or whatever, and then knows, the body knows to put an, more antibodies for whatever that is that the baby has it, into the milk so that the baby gets these antibodies yeah that, that based sense. on this backwash system okay yeah. i never heard of this before it's and the same so, as the, the ringing cedars isn't it if you watch, and so you it the, makes you t it makes you say well is so there's the reason why they you know started telling mothers oh don't breastfeed just use um formula and um uh, you know, we'll give them vaccines to give them the antibodies they need. You don't need to do that and free yourself from that, you know, enormous bother of having to breastfeed your baby all the time. And and so another part of the system, it's, it's to me, that's so well thought out that, you know, it was designed not for vaccines and poking ch our children with chemicals and whatever it, it's a perfectly designed system so the the bottom line is okay some of this stuff is subjective yes but this construct which i've talked about before i call it that supernatural construct the original matrix the god created the creator created matrix the 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 lies um, and the subsystems, the sub matrix comes in where we as humans are trying to manipulate the matrix. Whoever it is who's trying to create this sub matrix or sub matrices, if you will, has their own reasons for how they're manipulating it, right? Control money, greed, controlling resources, whatever the reasons, okay? And so for every human being, in my opinion, your job, your responsibility 
is to get the get to the root of the matrix. Whatever it takes to wake up to that and to rid yourself of all these sub matrix chaotic systems that that are altering your perception, your reality to a virtual reality versus a construct reality. Okay. So fake oil, we've talked about that. Fake um, energy, fake chemtrails, fake weather, fake. I mean, you can go on fake for hours trying to, trying to name all the things they're faking. All right. Or they're controlling your, your reality, um, your analog reality about not your matrix digital reality. So just like everyone knows, imagine, you, you know, just not even imagine, just remember for a minute your day, any day when you're all caught up, you know, you jumping in and out of Facebook, you're online, you're, you know, solving problems, you're doing all of your stuff, the, the phone's ringing or the faucet dripping in the kitchen, and all these annoyances, that you know, you got to fix in your reality. Okay. And how that makes your body and your mind feel. And then now put yourself in the place where you're, you're sitting out on the dunes or I'm sitting out on the beach or somebody's sitting out on their mountain um, and they're in quiet and they're in the original matrix construct with all of, without all of the distractions. And now think about how your body feels, how your mind feels. If you're able to tune out all that stuff and forget thinking about it, you know, it slips in all the time. Still got to fix the leaky faucet, <laughs> little niggling thing that comes in. Right there should tell you a lot about how much the construct has been manipulated because our natural state, I believe, other than maybe, you know, not getting eaten by a tiger or a shark or whatever, you know, nature might throw at you, but uh, uh, the natural world versus the virtual world is a hundred percent different feeling. hundred percent. Yeah. I don't know. Let, let me, let me just change the topic a little bit. Then. Okay. <clears throat> Let's talk about, about dreams now. Have you ever have you ever dreamt that you could fly, ever? Have you ever flown? Um, I, I think I don't remember my dreams very well. We've talked about this a lot. I'm not You're very not. good at remembering my dreams, but I have. My body has flown in dreams before. Okay, but when you flew in your dreams, I I, I had flying for years. I was flying for years, and I could I could walk on ceilings and stuff like that. Um, but when I flew. I didn't flap my arms. I flew through, flew through the power of thought. Right. How did you fly? Did you fly I, through thought, or was it, or was you wagging your arms? You wasn't, was you? No. Yeah. From from what little memory I have of flying dreams, um, it was just from my eyes looking out, knowing that I was not on the ground and I was flying. I didn't even. It didn't even dawn on me how I was doing it in the dream, whether yeah. I. Was I mean, I certainly don't remember having to flap my arms like a bird. It yeah. was a mental projection of flying. Yeah, I know. When I, I, it, 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 when I did it, it, it was just, it was just so real. You know, it was. I was going over countryside and all. But in every dream, every dream about flying, I had this one thing that was always there. My biggest fear was the overhead power cables, and uh, I was, I was listening to um, he's dead now I was listening to uh, um, Robert Munro uh, the guy who wrote the book called uh, Far Journeys and he had the same dreams that when he was flying in his dreams he was always coming across these power cables when he was taking up he was flying a plane I was just flying myself right. and every time every time I looked up I thought oh power cables again so i had i had to get out of the way yeah, of I, I would have to say that i never not only did i never think about power cables i never thought about even 
running yeah. into anything in my flying dreams. Yeah, I know, but it's like I think I when do you remember. Dream. I do remember falling out of flight and waking yeah. up and being so, completely startled. But. But, sorry, but but the flying thing is something it's like Superman, isn't it? And I was flying like Superman. It's a supernatural thing, and we can't do that on Earth. We can't fly no. by four. But maybe we can fly, you know, in a different density if we, you know, ascend well, to yeah. a different level where, you know, we're one thousandth of our present weight, you know, still 3D uh, and everything seems to be the same. Maybe you can fly there. Yeah, obviously, obviously density would, buoyancy and density would have to not be factors <laughs> in, in that yeah that realm you're speaking of because but i think it's way really, too much to fly but be, look at those big look at those big beetles that fly around you know they say that they're not really flying that they're uh what is it called um levitating levitating that's what the bees um, and bees do bees I've, levitate. Seen, I've seen it, during a certain month in the summer I'm, I seem to be inundated when I'm outside with what they call June bugs, which are the little brown beetles, not the yeah. not the iridescent colored bigger ones, but the little the small brown ones. And the little sons of bitches just they just and this run into stuff and bounce around and hit into you and hit the wall and just keep going. And you're like, man, do, what, do you not have any controls over your rudders or? your ailerons or whatever they're called they it, do. I know. And, and the airplane I mean, it doesn't seem to bother them obviously they're very hard shelled they do fall down there hit and, and get stunned every now and then but yeah they they i mean they're just willy-nilly flying around at the whim of they go and and i just laugh like what, what was that in the plan was that you know, is God got a pretty good sense of humor that, well, I'm going to make this one little beetle that just seems to not be able to control his flight very well. It just bangs off of everything. Yeah. I know. Well, I was but, looking at. Okay. So wait a minute. I want to go back and finish this before, before we get on to too much, too much of another topic. So having said all of that about where, where we started and where we've come from, through you know through and from and to okay um i just i want to say the reason why it is so annoying to those of us who have done the research and and asked the hard questions and gotten had have to deal with the answers that we didn't necessarily like but we ha but it's the truth so you have to go with it um the flat earth community is in no way a community. It's just a cult of people who believe all, all believe pretty much the same thing. You don't get to fit into the cult anymore once you question the dogma of the cult. So is that by choice or is that by ostracization, being ostracized? And, and the truth is, is that it, you know, to 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 kind of come up with an analogy, um, when you're a little bitty child <clears throat> and you're first learning, you know, to walk and stuff, and in your reality, you're doing so good. You know, you pull yourself off off the floor, you're all fours, and you pull yourself up onto the you know chair and hold on, and oh my God, I'm standing. OK, and then pretty soon you try some more stuff and you go, oh, my God, I took three steps before I fell down. And, you know, you just keep learning and trying until you, you don't even think about walking anymore. OK, maybe by the time you're five, six years old, you didn't even think about the art of walking. You just got it. But you turn around and you got you look at your little brother or sister who's now just one. And they're learning to walk or they pull themselves up on the chair and now they're, you know, hobbling around and you're laughing at them. You were just there a few years ago. OK, you're laughing at them. I don't want to feel like that. 
about people that are supposed to be my friends and 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 researchers and people in the community of truth seekers. I don't want to feel like that toward them, that they're like the little brother or sister who's like falling down and busting their lip on the coffee table because they're they don't know what you know yet. They haven't they haven't caught up, right? And, but that's yeah. how I feel often. It is, you know, damn it. When, when are you going to learn to get it right? Yeah, well, I mean, just to finish off on Flat Earth, Laurie, I mean, my thoughts as to why this was resurrected and brought back into, uh, you know, um, it's almost in mainstream. Social consciousness. You know, well, it's, 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 it's come back into, you know, popular fashion. Mm -hmm. I think the entire purpose of it was the people who behind it they knew that there was there was all these insurmountable problems with any model you know they've all got problems none of them can be provable in a hundred percent any way and it's just going to result in an endless bug fight between people in one camp and one in another uh, and it's sidetracking them from looking at anything else and that there are i mean huge they, 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 you, know, you get somebody asking a stupid question like well will i fall off the edge if i get to the end of it and then you'll get 500 replies about you know a crazy question like that um and it's endless and, this and, the, and the reason why you get 500 replies is because somebody needs to answer that question with the most thought out response they can come up with because they don't want to say, I don't know, or there isn't an answer. Okay. So that's when they came up with the inf infinite plane. And that's when all of the maps started coming out with the flat earth map in the middle. And then like another pizza pie, bigger pizza pie on the outside of that one with more continents and more water and another ice wall. And, you know, we'll never get there because we can't get across Antarctica to, you know, the current ice wall <laughs> to get, the, you know, across the hundreds of miles to get to the next you know, outer layer. And, and and so if you keep making up more and more fascinating answers that can't be proven, tested, or debunked, okay, then you win. And that's what it's all about. I want to be the winner. I want to be the one to come up with the most, you know, unchallengeable answer out there. Well, what happens with the dome? Did the, does the dome have to stretch out that far too? Because anything with the dome structure over it, it has, and I don't care how high it is, but boy, it's in order to be a dome and in, in order to be an enclosed system, it has to touch ground somewhere. It has to have an end. It yeah. has to be, have an end. And if it has an end, it has to be measurable. Right? Yeah. Yeah, if it, if it did exist as that, yeah, but uh, okay. we've seen it, so you know because so, it's so these these are the problems that that you know that have made the people that are that are considered the gurus or the top channels or the top bloggers, um, video makers of of flat Earth is they're the most creative ones to come up with the most creative answer that no one can debunk. It doesn't make it right and doesn't make it true, but nobody can debunk it because it can't be tested, measured, observed. Okay. Now, yeah. how is that any different than supernatural construct? How is that any, you can't test it. You can't shape it, model it. You can't, you can't make a little mini model. You couldn't make a giant big model because it's, it, it's, it's never frozen in time. You could make a, you could make a one moment model of it, but this is only a snapshot of the model because the model's always working and moving, right? Yeah, I know. Well, when I was at school, um, we did geography, and I remember this. I was about, I don't know, twelve, uh, and in the geography book there was a picture of a ship sailing off the edge of the edge of the sea. Um, I remember thinking at the time, what's this doing in my geography book? I mean, what's this got to do with anything? You know, so they were even at it then. 
But, right. I mean, I think we can both agree that Flat Earth, you know, past five years or so, it has been a psyop um, for whatever the... It's a recycled it? psyop too, Lawrence. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, here's what I mean by recycled psyop. So you start arguing with somebody about the dome. You know, you know, I have my little meme that's on the channel thing that said uh, that has um, uh, oh the Pulp Fiction guy, damn it, oh, yeah. his yeah. name saying say, say the dome with the gun, say the dome one more time. Um, everybody knows that I've made fun of the classic dome thing from the actually the time I entered Flat Earth. It was the one thing I couldn't. I couldn't agree with. And, um, but anyway, someone will bring up the dome and then I throw down the meme, say the dome one more time, meaning I'm not going with this line of conversation here. And what happens next? You will get eight, 18 different ancient versions the ancients, the Sumerians and the and the Greeks and the and look at all of these different ancient cultures that were so smart who all showed that same dome covered circle flat. It, it, it's so repeated that it must be right. Right? Yeah, that's what we do. Okay. How long have we been repeating Santa Claus when every adult on earth knows there's no Santa Claus? How long have we been repeating that? How long have we been repeating the Easter Bunny and the Tooth Fairy? Oh. And, and you know, I mean, I'll never forget how disappointed I was when I found out my dad was the Tooth Fairy. That he waited until I fell asleep. Put, put your tooth under the pillow. Do you have that over there, the Tooth Fairy? Yeah, we had two. We had um, Father Christmas and what have you, but, you know. I'm well, the Tooth Fairy in... in, yeah. in in our culture, uh, is is comes and gets your tooth and leaves money. Well, we, Laurie, we under the, under the uh, pillow. Go to we, sleep. You know, I know in your country, you know, you have your Halloween and you have the trick or treat, don't you? And the kids mm -hmm. come on the doors and people give them candy and chocolate or whatever. Um, and of course, it's taken off in, in the UK now, so you do get kids coming knocking on the door. Well, when they come. I always say, they say trick or treat, I'll say trick. And he ain't got a trick because they always expect to get given a some treat. Treat. What do you mean you've not got a trick? Well, why did you say trick or treat then? <laughs> you <never laughs> got a trick. You're such a curmudgeon. You've know, got to go against this. I always see a trick. Anyway, yeah. uh, going door to door for Halloween in the United States, uh, when I was a child 50 plus years ago, uh, everybody went out on Halloween, dressed up in a costume, went door to door in your entire neighborhood and got candy from everyone. Everyone participated. We, we didn't. Now, we didn't. No, we no didn't. hardly anybody does it anymore because of all the all the wrong reasons. Uh, not because it's, you know, some pagan holiday, but because... You know, your children might get poisoned from can oh, no unopened candy, no wrapped apples, no, you know, no, 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 no with everything. You might get grabbed into the house. You got parents got to yeah. come with you. So the whole culture is now gone bogus from the whole door to door thing, which I'm sure was planned uh, just to keep community apart. But yeah. my my point is just because that's the way we've always done it does not mean we have to keep doing it that way. And that's what flat earth has shown me just because that circle pie dome thing has been recycled and recirculated hundreds of times over the years does not make it any more right. That was the best they could come up with at the time that because that's all they had to that's all they had to work with. We've got tools and tech and devices now to disprove so many of the things that they believed back then. I don't care, you know, what historical scientific figure you are. You still have to go back and test what what they can, you know, what answer they came up with to see if it's still true, right? Just because somebody says, oh, it's the law or the theory, proven theory of gravity. Well, again, 
you know, look at all the people who have to debunk gravity just because it doesn't fit within the flat earth or need to fit within the flat earth disc model or worse yet, the flat earth uh, society disc model requires what? A constant, what is it? Two feet per second per second, some kind of formula for, for, for density and buoyancy working, right? Yeah, I mean, but apart from that, they they don't have that much difference to the, uh, you know, the headline flat earthers that they get on the no. big shows. It's, it's, the the it's the same model, so don't act like you're so much smarter than they are. Don't sure. don't act like you you know you're so much wiser to because you figured out one little debunky thing that they got wrong. W what about this other thirty others wrong things that are wrong with your model and your map? Yeah. So, I mean can I call myself a flat earther anymore? No. If somebody walked up to me on the street tomorrow who was a, who says they're a flat earther, okay, and thought they were introducing flat earth to me, don't know me from a load of coal, okay, and they walked up to me on the street and they say, have you heard about the flat earth? By the time I got done laughing I, and, and I started asking them questions, debunking flat earth, and then they go, oh, you know, you need to get off that globe model. No, 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 you don't understand. <laughs> I'm not talking about, I'm not a glober either. Yeah. I'm not a glober, I'm not a concaver, and I'm not a flat earther. And yeah. it would turn around to where I would be the one teaching them what I've learned rather than them teaching me about flat earth, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Um, I'm going to take a break here. Okay. And we'll uh, kind of put a bookmark in this and pick back up and make a part two or part three or whatever uh, okay. you want to do, or we can quit now and take it up again tomorrow. Well, um, you can keep going for that. I can just get myself some coffee and okay. More well, you... Let's just let's just bookmark it here, and we'll we'll come back in about ten minutes, and and okay. we'll start again. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. All right. Bye.